The following is a smart board lesson I uh, created for my fifth grade students on plant classification and then different properties of plants in general. Uh, this is a way to show how I use communication with my students, both verbally and non-verbally. The first thing I had them do was you, team brainstorming. They had to decide what classification was, and they wrote this down on sheets of paper. I got answers ranging from university to group to same, all different things about classification. And then what I did is I showed them on the smart board what classification was and gave them these definitions that you can see displayed on your screen right there. Um, just after brainstorming together and trying to come up with words that we thought related to what classification was. Next I had the students compare the similarities and differences of animals and plants through a Venn diagram, again associating language with what they already know. Uh, Here is a diagram of the different kingdoms of life, animals and plants shown with visuals as well as words. Again, a visual of the scientific names including species, species genus, family, order, class, etc. in a more visual format. Next I wanted to have the students um, understand that the way living things, plants are different from other living things is that they have photosynthesis. They use photosynthesis, so I gave them pictures of leaves in the sun to hint that photosynthesis was very important in this lesson. I had the students take notes throughout this lesson. Um, I had them record key vocabulary, um, trying to really get those ideas into their head, especially in preparation for their exam. Also, note taking is a big part of preparing for middle school, and I wanted them to be ready for that. So they list all different kinds of vocabulary. I gave them an activity here where their goal is to match the different scientific names with the pictures shown on the screen. Um, it was just an interactive way for students to match language with photographs and I gave them the opportunity to get a first hand at looking at scientific names before actually learning more in depth about them. Here's a slide that actually shows the information about scientific names for plants and animals, talks about genus versus species, as well as gives the visuals and names that we've seen previously on the previous slides in order for students to really understand uh, the connection between the two. I also wrote on the side right that English is written without italics, but Latin is always italicized, which is a big part of their understanding in preparation for their exam. Next, I made a connection to their own lives in that their school mascot are the bumblebees. So I had them match the Bombus hortorums with the genus and species for them to understand what their mascot was in terms of a scientific term. Uh, once again, note taking was a big part of this communication and language development, writing down the vocabulary, writing down examples and main points of the lesson that they were supposed to prepare for for their learning and for their tests later at the end of the unit. This is the second part of the lesson. It was a two-day lesson, and this is the Welcome to the World of Plants part of the lesson. We began by describing the differences between vascular and non-vascular plants, and we did that through showing diagrams, as well as highlighting key vocabulary words such as xylem and phloem, um, written there, circled, as well as the red phloem. Also giving examples of the different vascular and non-vascular plants, connecting the language to examples and scaffolding their knowledge in that way. Again, we took notes on this day, highlighting key vocabulary that is underlined there, xylem, phloem, non-vascular, vascular, really um, giving them the opportunity to do this nonverbal communication in a way that will help them remember it later. Uh, we emphasized the difference between vascular and non-vascular vascular plants, again, through a flow chart, looking at flowering plants, ferns, and conifers, and associating them with the different characteristics and definitions, just so students could see how it flowed from one thing to the next. Again, the non-vascular diagram categorizing algae versus mosses and liverworts, um, giving examples of where we can find them and brainstorming together and talking about these places and where we've seen these things before. That was a big part, talking to each other. Next, I gave the students the opportunity to engage in a game where they had to categorize vascular versus non-vascular plants, again, based on what they just learned. They had the opportunity to come to the smart board, match to the appropriate category, check their work, and then eventually check their answers and solve to see, um, to test their knowledge of their, and see how well the ideas were communicated to them throughout the lesson. 
Next we talked about reproduction in plants and how they can be produced by seeds, cones, and spores. Again, a big help in this preparation was I associating the names with pictures and with examples of plants that did such things. Um, as you see there, I'm moving what a spore may look like, a tiny brown cell. And again, students continue to take notes, emphasizing that key vocabulary and giving examples in class based on what we had just learned. Next, we gave photos and examples, um, as well as main facts about flowering plants. Students saw what flowering plants looked like. And again, with the conifers, we showed examples such as evergreens and spruces, things that they've probably seen before, have in their own backyards, as well as with ferns. Again, the photos, along with the text, uh, both oral, visual, and written forms all help the students very much. Here's another activity, a game, where students match the pictures with the written language to see if they can test their knowledge of what flowering versus conifers versus mold, spurs, and ferns. Molds, spores, and ferns were. They could check their answers there. Again, this time I had them write uh, their notes before the next section of the lesson was taught, just so they had the vocabulary in their head before learning the next phase. And here with the vocabulary, with the word cotyledon, I really wanted to break it down to show them not only how to pronounce the word, but really focus on it. I'm making a focal point for the next couple slides. In that monocot here, you can see that the cotyledons have parallel lines, and I included photos of plants with parallel lines, try to connect it to, connect it to examples they had already seen in their lives, scaffolding their knowledge in that way. Especially when we moved on to dicots, we could see that their branch leaves associated with things such as sunflowers and daisies, um, trying to make those comparisons. Another part of this lesson that's really difficult to see um, just by clicking through a couple slides really quickly is that I really did ask the students um, critical thinking questions, having them pause throughout the lesson to think about their answers, make connections to their own lives, especially with the games and writing their notes. I emphasize again and again the importance of every concept um, and I really think students understood it pretty well, able to engage in discussions with their teammates as well as with myself at the end. A culmin culminating activity we did after the lesson was we had the students create a chart that categorized the different types of flowering plants and ferns, vascular, non-vascular, etc. Just giving them the opportunity to connect those definitions in the vocabulary words that they had worked on so much over the last two days into a final product from which they can study um, and really learn from for the future. So again, this was the plant classification two-day lesson that I did with my fifth graders. I really think it did a great job of emphasizing verbal and nonverbal communication, giving, the chance, giving students the chance to write down um, answers, to communicate with each other, to answer questions in class, and then take notes and discuss with the teacher. Um, and it's definitely a lesson I could see myself reusing again in the future.